for the time. Tea time. Yeah. This is tea time. Yeah. Make a difference. One cup at a time. Tea time. Yeah. So be sure to grab your tea, grab a seat, and tune in to Miss Liz. Tea time. Making a difference. One cup at a time. Well, good afternoon and welcome to Tea Time. That's right, it is Thursday and we have two incredible Tea Times today. We have Carrie Hummingbird this afternoon and then tonight we have a returning guest, Allison Hammond, who will be talking about maps. And we're not talking about the maps to travel, but maps of life planning. So we're going to talk about that tonight at 7 p.m. But this afternoon we have Carrie Hummingbird in the house and we're going to be talking about med um healing inner inner healing and teaching earth and alchemy and all of that good stuff but before we get into any of that we're going to get you over to miss liz's youtube channel get you to subscribe ring that little doorbell and you can listen to these tea times at any time uh, during the day night evening uh if, at, at your home in your car in the shower you can listen to miss liz at any time so let's get you over there and get you to subscribe and what does miss liz offer you i offer you over 300 different interviews 300 different incredible guests from across the globe that's what miss liz gives you so you want to really check that little subscribe button out so now a little bit about um my guest today and a disclaimer of course and then we're going to get carrie in here and we're going to spill some tea we're going to have some fun and you do not have to drink tea to be uh listening to tea time you you drink the choice of your foot of your drink the choice of your choice take the choice that you'd like to drink miss liz's tongue is all doing all that funny stuff again so let's get the disclaimer out there and bio and then let me get carrie in here we're going to spill some tea together for all of you guys disclaimer for miss liz's tea time live show miss liz myself is going live using Streamyard. before leaving a comment please grant Streamyard permission to see your name at streamyard.com Please be advised that the content brought forward for any Tea Time show hosted by myself, Miss Liz, is always brought forward in good faith. However, may bring forward dialogues and opinions that are not representative of my platform. The facts and information are perceived to be accurate at the giving time of airing. All Tea Time guests and audience participants are responsible for using their good judgment in taking any action that may relate to the discussion. The content brought forward may include discussions for some where they may be emotionally at risk. It's significant to know that the show is engaging in discussion forms only to offer and inspire awareness and connection and is not providing therapeutical advice. If you have any questions about the disclaimer or the panelist discussion, you may freely contact me, Miss Liz, through my email at bookingmissliz at gmail.com. Moving forward, should you choose to voluntarily participate in today's show in any aspect, I myself, Miss Liz, welcomes you. And should you decide that the show is not made for you at this time, I respect those wishes and we'll see you at a later date and later show. So again, all tea time shows are done on Thursday, 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you see a tea time on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, it's a surprise guest, a returning guest, or a rescheduled tea time. Uh, Miss Liz does all of that. So now a little bit about my guest. Well, she's in the back, and she's ready to serve a good, strong cup of tea to you all today. So I have Carrie Hummingbird. She's a medicine woman, mother, and mentor. Is a founder of Inner Medicine Training, a mystery school that shares potent ancient traditions from the Ankh and Himalayas. I'm going to get her to say, I think I said that wrong, for owning your wisdom and living your purpose. She is the number one international best-selling author of Inner Medicine, Becoming One with Mother's Earth for the Survival of Humanity on the international best-selling charts for over 29 weeks. Love is Fierce, Healing the Mother Womb, The Second Wave, Trans transcending the human drama on the international best-selling charts for over 237 weeks and the award-winning best-selling book awakening to me one woman's journey to self-love but she describes the early years of her spiritual awakening as the host of soul nectar show miss hummingbirds inspires people to lead their lives wide awake with an authenticity passion and purpose that positively impacts others as a healer and mentor, she 
cat catalyzes mind shift that transforms lives, challenges into gifts of wisdom. So let me get Carrie in here. And if you hear the ding, it's just Miss Liz's watch. We're, we're, we're trying to keep track of Miss Liz's heart here. Um, so welcome, Carrie. Hi, it's so good to see you and to be here and to support your audience. Well, it's nice to be at the reverse of the table, right? Because I was on your incredible <laughs> podcast. So now it's nice to have you here as a guest. Uh, so Carrie, let's go back. Who was Carrie as a little girl and who's Carrie now? Mm, good question. So as a little girl, I was <clears throat> a bright light in a very dark space. And my, uh, my early years were filled with um, chaos and struggle and conflict between my mother and two husbands, my first, my natural biological father, and then the first stepfather. And so that was a very tumultuous world to be having be my first five years of my life. And, um, and then at five, my mom married husband number three, and that worked out really well, very super generous, kind, loving person. And he ended up being my dad until he passed away in 2017. And so today, who am I today? Today I am a medicine woman. And what does that mean? It means that I am a healer. Some people call it a shaman. I just don't like that word um, for me. So I use medicine woman. And what I do is I support people in healing on the inside and claiming their inner medicine and walking the world in a powerful way as a sovereign being of light, which is the truth of us. It's just that we forget that on our journey of darkness. And uh, so that's that's the beginning and the end, <laughs> or so far the middle. <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm at the end of my story. I'm kind of like at the beginning of a very powerful part of my story in getting out here and sharing these words with others and helping people to navigate the darkness that they are currently in, as I know the world is experiencing a lot of change and shift and a lot of things that are that seem very frightening and um we have this opportunity to remember who we are in truth at this time to lead our lives in a more powerful way to beneficially impact others with grace and beauty and love and kindness and to step away from the paradigms of war and fear and conflict and violence which many of us most of us have experienced in our lifetime some version of that so yeah i'm here to bring messenger hummingbird hummingbird is always known as the messenger of spirit and hummingbird came to me at the beginning of this part of my journey and and came to me as a very powerful ally of remembering the innocence of childhood that i didn't experience fully because i was in, in so much darkness but when we, when we have early, early childhood darkness, it, there's the opportunity to reclaim that light and that innocence later in life on this healing part of the journey. And then to become an adult that has a, a very awake inner child that knows that magic is real, that, that awe and wonder and delight are real. And they're a normal experience when we walk aligned with our souls. And so that's been my you know that that's a, the story of so many shamans and mystics and medicine people is that early darkness and then the light you know later with the healing of the self and carrie you just said something that really really just hit me you know magic is real mm -hmm. you know magic is real we're, we're, we're just losing the imagination and and you know our inner selves because of systems and programs and things that are telling us, you know, don't believe in that, don't believe in that, you know? So when you think of magic, what comes to mind for you, Carrie? What I think of magic is when your inner dreams begin manifesting on the outside world in encounters with nature, even that seem hard to believe that it's just all coordinated that way. But it is, it's magical. And so one example I have of a magical experience was when I was in um, a vision quest, vision quest light, 
you know, kind of like in the woods. Native Americans always had vision quests for their young people when they came of age, you know, like 15, 16, to go off into nature and and just be with nature full on without any comforts from home. And so in my Western version of that, I went off into the woods for three days. I had water, but I didn't have any food. I didn't have any electronics or any books or anything to entertain my left brain. Um, and I had a tent, so I had a place to sleep, but I, I didn't have anything else. It was just water, a place to sleep, and then quiet and stillness and being with myself and being with nature. And on the first day of that um, beautiful experience, I was... Um, very busy in the first part of the day, getting my camp set up and getting everything in place and fixing the medicine wheel that was on the property on that little piece of land and and doing starting what I call an earth painting, which is a, a way to work with the earth to help process transmute energies that you might be feeling that you want to change your life, something about your life. And so we can do an earth painting to work with the earth to help us change our life in that way. And so I'd already done all that. And I was a little bored because you know, my regular life, I'm quite busy and I'm always doing something. I don't know if anyone else can resonate with that, but I was like, what do I do now? And I wasn't supposed to walk off the piece of land that I was on. So I just kind of took a little walk around the piece of land and I found this giant rock, which to me seemed like a stage. And so I stood up on the stage and I started singing a healing song to the forest and calling in allies calling in the mountains and the trees and the waters and the fire and you know all the animals and just like one by one just calling in this support for myself and then at some point near the end of the song <clears throat> i had this little giggle inside and i sang and called in hummingbird and lo and behold a hummingbird just started right out of the forest as soon as i started singing to it and came and hovered right in front of my third eye and stayed there. Wow. That produced awe and wonder. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I just called Hummingbird and here it is. And it stayed there for like a good minute or more. It was timeless. It was just, wow, how long is this thing going to hang out there staring at me? And then I said, I think you're letting me know that when I call you answer and it nodded its head, like literally nodded its little head and then flew off. Wow. Now that is magical to me. That is awe inspiring. That is like the divine is listening. These animals are part of it and it's interacting with me in, in this beautiful, magical way. And I, I'm not in, I'm in non ordinary reality. I'm in a magical reality. All of a sudden, nature is talking to me in this blatant way to let me know, hey, we're always listening to you. We hear you all the time. And when you call, we come. It's not just singing a song. You're like actually calling us and we're here. You just can't see us, yeah. but we're here. And then I tried it later and it didn't have, it didn't work, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you can't like make it happen. It's not about making it happen, it's about experiencing the miracle and receiving it as a gift to support you. And, and for me, it was to support and trusting that I wasn't just singing a song to emptiness, that there was consciousness infused in my entire surroundings, listening to me and saying, yes. Well, and, and that's something we really don't talk about is the divine listening, right? Going out, like you said, like you went for three days, just taking that time away. You know, I think it's a good recharge for everyone. Maybe three days might be too long for some people, but you know what? And even just a weekend, just detach from stuff and and attach to the divine universe and nature and that, uh, you know, just going for a nature walk barefoot. You know, a lot of people are scared to walk bare feet, but that's actually grounding. Do you do any of that grounding? Uh, Carrie? All the time, all the time. Yeah, I do with my bare feet on the earth and then also... Um, just meditating and intending that my energy cords go all the way to the center of the earth and wrapping those energy cords around the center of the earth and just bringing myself into balance, especially when I start to feel like the world has gotten off kilter or it's chaotic or I feel imbalanced or I feel like, you know, threatened by life in some way or threatened by other humans or scared about what's going to happen, then Grounding really helps me to get connected with Mother Earth and then with my body that I'm safe, I'm held, I'm provided for. 
she's always been under our feet. <laughs> she's never gone away. So we, we have support. We have a loving present mother that gives us food, that has shelter for us, that has all these allies to support us on our journey if we get lost. And so we come back into that grounding with Mother Earth, with our bodies. And it just helps me to, yeah, to get back into my heart. And there's this thing called heart coherence, which there's an organization called Heart Math, and it's heartmath.org. And they have done a lot of studies about how when we are able to be grounded and in our hearts, instead of in our minds and thinking about things, but in our hearts, in that quiet space listening, and when we're able to be in that space, our hearts can open bigger and they becomes like a, a field of love, a field of presence, a field of compassion that emanates from our being and can actually even help other people to get back into their hearts in case they got too much in their minds into worry and doubt and confusion and all those things. Can It creates a, a field of love that can bring other people back to themselves as well. So Carrie, we have a question here. Can you tell us what the medicine wheel is? The medicine wheel. Yeah, medicine wheel is a indigenous practice of recognition that there are four directions on the earth. There's the south, the west, the north, and the east. And then there's the earth herself, and then there's Father Sky. There's beautiful star nations and sun and moon and the sky, all those astrological bodies. And so the medicine wheel is a physical representation of the energies that already exist, the consciousnesses that are available to us to tap into to get guidance. And so when we create a medicine wheel, we are honoring the four directions, Mother Earth and Father Sky. And so what it looks like is just rocks. <laughs> so you would just collect rocks and um, preferably open sacred space, which is something I share in my books, my inner medicine book and all of my other books has a passage about opening sacred space. How does one do that? But you call in, you welcome in the south, you welcome the west, the north, the east, the ancestors, the guides, the beings on the land, the animals, the plants, you know, the fire, the water, all of the elements. You welcome all of this in and then you start to, with intention, create a circle on the ground with rocks that's big enough to stand in. And then, okay, so you're standing in the circle. You can stand in there. Yeah, it's nice to either you can stand on the outside of it, outside of it, or you can stand on the inside of it. Your choice. But if you make it big enough that you could stand in four different quadrants of it, because that's basically what you're going to do is create a giant circle, and then create lines down and lines across. Right. So there's four quadrants, and then each one of those quadrants represents a direction. You know, so then if you wanted to receive guidance from the south direction, it has different guidance and medicine than the west direction, which has different guidance and medicine than the north and difference in guidance than the east. And so if you create one of these on the ground and then you can stand in it and say, winds of the south, I need help opening my heart. I need help getting connected with my body. I feel disconnected. I need help, you know, feeling myself again being okay with being on this planet, you know, because some of us maybe don't feel like being here after we witness everything we witness. We might be like, I don't like this place. So, <laughs> you know, so we <laughs> yeah. got to get back in our bodies and be like, okay, I came here for this. So help me to be present in my body, even though all this stuff's going on, that makes me really uncomfortable. Can you help me get back in my body so I can be present? And, and it's only in our bodies that we access that heart math I was talking about, the heart coherence, that then we can become this like radiating sphere of love for other people once we're in our bodies and in our hearts. And so that's the South medicine helps us to get in our bodies again and feel safe on the earth. You know, but if I went to go stand in the West, I'd be asking different questions. I'd be asking, how can I let go of the past? How can I let go of my chattering mind? How can I have focus? How can I have clear intention? Can you help me to be like Jaguar hunting in the dark, seeing clearly? Maybe I feel confused about why, why all of these ideas and my heart says one thing, but everybody else around me is saying this other thing. It doesn't seem right. It doesn't feel right. How can I understand it? So Jaguar can support us, that West energy can support us to know the truth of things. Not what people are saying, but like what's actually happening. 
And so, so we might go to the West for that. So Carrie, what got you into uh, the medicine? Well, 20 years of weekly psychotherapy sessions <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, not making progress. So, you know, I was clearly willing because I was paying money out of pocket to go to these therapists week after week after week. I was showing up there. I was like, I don't understand how this thing can't get any better. You know, like, I still don't feel like being here. I, I don't know what to do about that. And I even was taking the not feeling pills, you know, for 13 years. And, and it was like, that wasn't helping. I mean, I was breaking the rules by having wine. So it could be like the wine was what it was. But anyway, but that whole strategy wasn't working for me. It just didn't yeah, it didn't make me better. It didn't make me feel better or aligned or anything. It w helped me cope, you know, some with what was going on or make some sense of some things, but it didn't really stop the <laughs> the stuff I wish would stop. So basically, I said, well, after 20 years of that, obviously it's not going to work. If I've done it for 20 years and it hasn't worked, it's probably not going to work. So I just said, I'm, I'm going to follow my own intuition, my own guidance inside of myself, and I'm going to get out of here. So I got out of the marriage. I got out of the psychotherapy. I got out of the drugs. I just said no to all of it. And I, I stumbled into shamanic <laughs> training and healing. And ever since then, like that made a whole lot of sense. You know, as a matter of fact, it made so much sense that it felt like I had been an upside down world. And then everything Ooh. just went and it was right side up. And I was like, I was thinking the opposite of what actually the truth was, you know? And so when I got grounded with and connected back with my body and with Mother Earth through these shamanic practices and rituals, all of a sudden I could see that I had been totally misgiven previously. Like I didn't understand anything about what was going on actually on this planet, that I was caught in a lot of delusion. And that's why I was so sad and that I needed to get right relationship. I needed to have the, you know, right side up, you know, not upside down. And when I got right side up, things started making sense. I started making forward traction. I started having momentum. I started like things started congealing and coming together with, and the energy is love, you know? So the upside down world is fear. So when we're in the upside down world, it doesn't matter how hard we try to be in love. We can't be because we're in the fear world. And so everything is just backwards all the time. But when we make that, finally make that choice to speak our truth, which is what I started doing, I started using my throat chakra, speaking my truth, like, hey, this isn't working for me. And by the way, these 20 years of therapy didn't solve it. I need to get out of here. And I made that decision for myself and I followed the inspiration from my soul. All of a sudden, things started getting better because I was following love. I was listening to love. And like I said, it became right side up world instead of upside down. And then I, everything in my life has just been healing, like this beautiful coming together of reclamation of self, of soul, of different lives, of different relationships, just so much healing, like a broken vessel, like broken vessel, you know, where they, it's a Japanese art of breaking the, breaking the, the beautiful vessel and then filling up all the lines with gold is I felt like my life is like that now. And it's just so much beauty. It's amazing how healing it is when we can surrender ourselves to what I call the red road, which is an indigenous name for walking the beauty way, walking with mother earth, walking in harmony with the planet, walking in harmony with our bodies, with each other and learning how to listen and learning how to love in the truest sense of the word. And, you know, there's a lot of Christians right now that are speaking a lot of things that don't feel very loving to me and right side up world. And what I want to say is that, the ancient Christian practice, the Essenes, they and Jesus was an Essene, would wash the feet of his disciples. He would actually get down on his knees and wash their feet. And he would say to them, this is right relationship. Do you understand? I am lifting you up. I am not controlling you or power over you. I am supporting you to come to your own truth. You know, this is the true meaning of Jesus' teachings. This is the true meaning of all major teachers in this planet. Buddha, you know, another one. All these beautiful teachers came to this planet teaching the same message, but in different ways. And when you're in right side up world, you totally get that. But when you're in upside down world, you think it's okay to control and dominate others. Yeah. 
And we got that a lot of that going okay. on. <laughs> yeah. We got that a lot the of that going thing on. thing that is completely upside down from what the truth is. Yeah. And, 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 and that's the thing, right? We live in a society where it is a lot of control and a lot of uh, programming and, and that. So when we're in our elements and we're, we're, we're in ourselves and our intuition and that we're, we're pulled away from it because it's saving us. But I want to get into the cleansing of the feet because for me, understanding the cleaning of the feet is cleaning the path of the steps that you're going to take in life, right? is the new beginnings. Like I'm cleaning you and I'm lifting you up to move forward is, is what I'm understanding from the cleansing of the feet. Is that correct, Carrie? Well, if you think about it, the feet are the ones that support us on our journey. So the feet are the ones, like if you had to go barefoot, the feet are the ones that step across the brambles, that get all bloodied, get all torn up, you know, that get calloused, that have, you know, all those breaks and, and bruises, you know, because we're, we're using them to walk across this earth. And so, of course, that is the most tender place for us, but it gets the most calloused. It's the most important if we want to walk, we've got to have feet that work, right? Yeah. And so, you know, but these tiny little appendages are, hold our whole body up. Just think about that for a second. Like, they're not that big. <laughs> But somehow they can hold us up. Like, it's crazy when you think about it, like how small they are. But they can hold our whole body weight and not only hold us, but help us run, help us do all kinds of amazing things. This miraculous thing called the foot. And did you know that the foot on the bottom of the foot actually has the entire body is on the bottom of the foot? So that's the acupuncture. So in Chinese medicine, they they mapped the entire, how the how the bottom of the foot maps the entire body. <laughs> so when oh. you look at the foot, that your organs are represented by the feet. So in fact, the feet help your entire body touch the earth. If you think about it this way, the feet have points, acupuncture uh, points, meridian points for all the organs in your body, all the systems of your body come through your feet and touch the earth. How powerful is that? So powerful. So these are like really important portals. So we cleanse the feet so that the feet can receive fully Mother Earth's energy without any crust and blockages and, you know, untruth, right? And as a firewalker, because I lead people across the fire um, in firewalking events, similar to Tony Robbins, but without the cheerleading rah, rah, rah stuff, it's kind of like, we don't force you across the fire. We just <laughs> let you go when you're ready. You know, we sing, we dance, and when we feel we're ready, we dance across the coals. It's very feminine. It's a very beautiful experience. Not to say anything about Tony Robbins, he has his way, but like for a feminine experience, it's very like, you know, it's whenever you're ready and as often as you want. And so what I learned though from fire walking was that sometimes you get kissed by the fire. And so you might get a little blister or something. And so I started getting curious, like, what is that? You know, why is that happening? Because it seemed really specific. Because when I would look at the bottom of my foot, and I would see the point that got kissed by the fire. And then I would look at this foot reflexology chart to see like what meridian is that in my body. And it would turn out to be exactly the thing I needed wow. for this part of my life. So for example, um, when I first started leading firewalks, the point that I was getting kissed at was the meridian for um, willpower. And so the fire was giving me lots of courage. It was giving me lots of energy and vitality. Go for it. You can do this. And I was experiencing some fear and doubt in my will center. And so, bam, here comes this energy into my solar plexus to get, you can do this. Go for it. You can be strong. We, you got this. You got training. You know what you're doing. It's going to be okay. And so this fire just rushed up into my body. But that part was closed down a little. You know, it was kind of blocked from my own doubt. And, you know, I wasn't really opening up my solar plexus. I wasn't trusting my will center. And so it was shut down a little. And so the fire had a hard time getting in there. So just to be sure that that's what actually it was. And it, and it turned out it was also the kidneys, right? So I was like, oh, I wonder if this plays out if I go see a natural path. And so I didn't tell her anything. I just filled out all her forms and, you know, like billions of forms for natural paths. And I was like, okay, this is, um, you know, I just need some support. I don't, know what, I don't know what's going on with me. And so I filled it all out. And then she said, well, you need kidney support in your solar plexus. Wow. <laughs> And so I thought, you know, I already knew that. And so I took off my foot and I showed her the fire already showed me that two weeks ago. 
<laughs> but I wanted to show you because this is how powerful the fire is. Yeah. It's an elemental body. It's one of the oldest elements on earth, you know, and, and this is the other thing that is like upside down completely is, um, I had a friend who was initially helping me lead firewalks and then he got really crazy religious and started reading like the Bible and all this and turned into a completely different person that I don't recognize. And he's like, it's evil to do firewalks, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, what is going on with this person who used to be so loving, gentle and kind? Hmm. And so um, I was like, this is, this just doesn't seem right. I mean, the fire is our gift. You know, the fire is the thing that lights up the night. The fire is the thing that helps us to have energy and vitality. It cooks our food. It, the fire helps us to be warm at night when it's cold. The fire gives us light when the sun is on the other side of the earth. The fire is massively important. Like it's, it's our survival. Without the fire on this plane of existence, we might not have survived. Well, it's part of the elements as well, right? Yeah, it's one of the four elements. I mean, five elements if you look at it that way. But, like, it's a powerful being of light. Like, this thing shows up in the massive darkness and it lights the way. So I was like, I don't understand you. But, okay, I'll I'm send you with love. But I, I have to keep on my path because I know the fire is my friend. And yeah. the fire helps purify me. It has the electric blue light of truth. It has a rose light of compassion. It has a golden light of energy. The blue, the the rose, and the gold are the four are the three primary colors, right? They're the three primary building blocks of color on this planet. They are so powerful. And that's all inside the candle flame. That's all inside the fire. Like I want that to purify me. I trust that more than anybody else's opinion. <laughs> I, I trust the fact that this fire has got my back. Like if I need help, I can burn and release it. Well, even miraculously, by giving it's you, gone. right? But even giving you a blister, carry it was it was preparing you to understand that there was something going on with the kidney, right? It, it was giving you the knowledge that look within and fire walking. I I don't know much about it, and I'm learning as as we're speaking here, Carrie. But fire walking has to have to do with a lot of trust as well, right? Within yourself, that you. Can it has to do with listening to yourself because. And then it's as I always tell people, dance and chant and sing, right? Get energy moving in your body. You have to raise your frequency to be matching the frequency of the fire. If your frequency is, is the same or greater than the fire, you walk across it, no problems. It's just like, bam, you know, it's amazing. And they've actually done studies on this. They actually had one group of fire walkers from Tali Birkin's fire school where they walked across, they were going to do it on television and they never aired the episode because they just couldn't believe what they saw in front of their eyes. But these guys walked across hot metal wow. and they left footprints in it and their wow. feet were unharmed. It, it's amazing. What <laughs> it's it's like, it just, it, you can't make so, that up. So, Carrie, I want to I want to get into your tea, and then I want to get into some. You have an amazing retreat coming up that I want to talk about a little bit too, as well. And your books, uh, you talked about inner medicine. We're going to get into that a little bit, but I want to talk about your tea. You gave me teaching earth and al alchemy. Did I say it right? Yes. There we go. So, tell me why you gave me those three words for your tea. Well, because I I'm a teacher. I'm a mentor. I'm a guide. I teach ancient traditions, rituals, and understandings that support us in today's world to reconnect with our planet because we've uh, really massively disconnected from our planet. And Earth, because I, I'm i here as an ally of Earth, you know, as much as I love the stars, this is our home. This is our planet. We're made of Earth and we've got to make it work here or there's nowhere else we can go and be safe. We'll just bring the same stuff the next place and do it all over again. You know, so we got to learn our lessons here on Earth to be stewards of any other place in this galaxy. And that's right. what humanity hasn't realized. They think you can just fly away from here and leave all the trash. No, <laughs> we got to clean up our toys and help this planet thrive. That's our job. And until we can do that, we're not going anywhere else, not long term. Yeah. So we'll just be stopped in our tracks by other forces that are out there watching over us, helping us to not do harm anywhere else. You know, so Earth, because we got to learn how to work with this planet and alchemy, because we can create amazing alchemy transformation, um, just incredible uh, shift and change is normal on Earth. Actually, it's us who's 
become abnormal, trying to lock everything into like control structures and it has to be exactly like this forever. And that, you know, history written in stone in a book and all of this, you know, we're reading the same book that we got like 3,000 years ago, however many years. Come on now, you guys, like <laughs> this is a flowing river. The river of time <laughs> is a massive river and it's constantly flowing. And the only ones trying to keep it the same way are the humans <laughs> trying to like cement it all in and or t change the story to suit their needs, right? Which is also happening with the removal of critical race theory texts um, across our country um, because people don't wanna face the truth of what actually happened here and own up to it and do the personal yeah. work to come together as a collective. Um, you know, they just wanna make a new fairy tale and say it never happened you know, and right. shut down all the voices that know it did, you know, so well, there is it. that too. Yeah, let's <laughs> blink our eyes and turn around and it never happened. It was all in, in your imagine. It was all a dream, right? And the, you know, the, the indigenous people, they say, they say Westerners are always facing the future, trying to figure out what's next. And what they do is they face the past and they listen to their ancestors because their ancestry knows and so when we face the past and we stay in the present, we learn what to do, what not to do. And we take better actions for the future that create potentials for seven generations to come, not just our lifetime in the next five minutes, but seven generations of life on this planet is the way the indigenous people think. And that's what's gotten them through this horrendous time on the planet the last several hundred years on this continent being, you know, having all of their land taken and having their customs decimated and being forced into these tiny little plots of land that far away from where their ancestors lived and then called savages and all of these horrible things that have happened to indigenous people. And yet they still show up and practice their traditions. They face their ancestors and they listen and they still hold visions for the future for seven generations to come. And many of them offer space for the very people whose ancestors decimated their cultures to learn how to do better. And this is the kind of grace that a person can have when they face their ancestors and they listen to what their ancestors have to say and they act accordingly, become good humans. And otherwise you're facing the future, living in a lot of fantasy wrapped up inside of technology on TikTok, finding answers in 20 seconds. And you're getting, you're just spun around like a donkey you just, you don't even know what ends up, dude. You're so lost if you're doing that. So if you want to know what's up, you got to get around some people that have got roots. I mean, somebody that knows their ancestors has got roots. This is one of the reasons yeah. why this European Christian colonization thing interrupted ancestry because they know the power of that. They don't want people talking to their ancestors. They want well, people disempowered alone and, you know, and lost in TikTok. And, and, they, and they say, if you really want to know yourself, go back seven generations because the person that was your seven generation ancestor is similar to who you are. will have a lot of same traits as well. Uh, I do a lot of uh, ancestry and yeah. want to know my history of my family, why I have them, why I act a certain way, why I talk a certain way, why I look at life a different way. Right. And you have to go back to the roots because it's weird. It's like a tree. You got to go back to the roots for the branches to grow. You have to understand why the, the roots were there in the first place. If you don't understand your roots, you're not ever going to understand the branches, you know? And, yeah. And, and we can create a collaboration. We can create a collaboration with our ancestors that creates magic. We're talking about alchemy. Like I'll tell you what's super alchemical is working with ancestors seven generations back to create potential seven generations in the future. That What's really true. alchemical is working with ancestors and descendants and creating a flow of life. That's yeah. very alchemical. It's beautiful. It's magical. And it's totally possible. It's all inside of us right here, right now. Because there is no, this idea of time that we have is very limited. And this idea of ourselves as physical bodies only with minds and like the supremacy of the mind is really backwards. That's one of those things in upside down world. Because yep. it's not admitting the spirit that flows through you that created all of it to begin with. You know, you're sort of leaving out the most important piece, which is your spirit. Without the spirit, you wouldn't exist. <laughs> you know, right? you need the spirit. It's like you need the fire. It's like an element. It's part of us, you know, and until yeah. you understand that we're in that upside down world, you know, and that's where the confusion, division and everything comes in because then it's the control, right? 
because when you're in the upside right right side up you're seeing things differently you're seeing open doors and open opportunities and flow and growth and light you know and when you're on the upside down you're you're seeing darkness you're seeing confusion excuses and lacking you know no no motivation uh you know but i look at your experience with the firewalk and you know it's like life we get scars right we get these challenges and hurdles that we have to overcome there's something in us that we still have to heal there's something that we're not listening to you know um and it always goes back to the inside of ourselves the inner child right because until we understand the inner child, we'll never understand ourselves. That's how yeah, I the, feel. Yeah, the inner Sorry. child is the gateway. The divine child is the gateway to your soul and creating magic. It's that part of you that's innocent. It's that part of you that didn't get all corrupted. And so a lot of times when we're here to be big, big, bright, shining lights for others, you know, we have these really challenging early life experiences that sort of like encapsulate this divine child inside a protective coating, like buried deep inside, it's like protecting it right? While all of this shadow thing is happening around us and we're experiencing it. And then at some point we find the pathway to healing, right? And so my, my journey with psychotherapy was part of my pathway to healing, but it wasn't the end. It was just the part. And uh, there's a lot of master teachers that say that first, if we're going to be healers, we have to understand our minds, like, because so much of being human is about being the mind. And so we have to be able to understand our minds. We have to be able to navigate our minds. We have to be able to understand perception and emotion and how it makes stories and the different parts of your mind that make those stories, a reticular activating system that shows you what you think is going on, but it's like showing, showing somebody else something else. So we have to understand all these things. So we have to spend some time in whatever modality we have with a master teacher or with a psychotherapist or with somebody else. We've got to understand the mind. That's the first stop. But then we move beyond the mind because we realize the mind is a cage. If we're only operating from the mind, we're in a, we're in a jail cell. We're not able, we can only create whatever is in the confines of that cell. But when we get beyond the mind, and Einstein used to say, you can't solve a problem from the same mind that created it. And that I saw that quote at some point, and I was like, I think that means I can't trust my mind. Like, if they're telling me, yeah. and they were telling me that I was crazy, I was like, well, then I can't listen to anything my mind is saying. If I'm crazy, then I, the last thing I'm going to listen to is this, <laughs> right? Because you're yeah. telling me I'm crazy. So I said, I'm just not going to listen to it. And I started experiencing life instead. I started using my senses. I started tuning into my heart and my body, asking, how is my heart and my body? I use my body as a pendulum. I learned how to use a pendulum to muscle test the wisdom of Mother Earth. Like, what is Mother Earth telling me? Because she's in my, she created my body. I'm made of Mother Earth. I don't think I'm made of some other planet on Earth. I'm made of Earth on Earth, right? So yeah. that means that she's my teacher. So if she's my teacher and I made of her, then I'm going to listen to what she says. And she's built this built in mechanism of like, yes and no. <laughs> so I'm, it's made really simple. It's either a yes or it's a no. And so mm -hmm. I learned how to muscle test to get yeses and nos. And then that way I'm not listening to this. This here will get you in a lot of trouble. <laughs> it will. And it's getting a whole lot of people in a whole lot of trouble now. I think because all there are is here and yeah. they're listening to this thing and this thing's like, yeah, Jesus said, go ahead, guns and and guns and kill people and bloody violence. Sure. If you don't do what we want, we'll kill you. That sounds reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> that's like. Yeah. Well, that and that's where they go, I, right? When they want to program you. The, the, the programming and system start with the mind. They they work with the mind. They play with your mind. So don't listen to the mind. Listen to the heart. Listen to the, the heart. What does the heart say? You know? What does your heart say is true? And and the other thing is like and beyond the heart is the soul, the energy. That helps you breathe. You know, I've seen my dad pass away and not everybody's had somebody close to them pass away, right? I've, I've had several people close to me pass away. And the earliest one actually was my granddad. And I remember being down there in this in the room where he passed away. He would pass away in the bathroom. So I stood in there and he was at the funeral home at the time and his body. 
and I, but I was standing and I was looking in the mirror and I was telling him, I'm so sad I didn't get to see you again. I'm really, really sad. I really miss you. And I was just having a conversation with him. And all of a sudden, this like blanket of love wrapped itself around me. And I smelled that smell that they have at funeral homes where they've embalmed the body. Like I smelled it. It was so wow. pungent. And it's like he was holding me and saying, it's okay, I'm right here. That to me was my one of my first experiences of his body is dead, but he's alive. It's okay. And and then when my own dad passed away in 2017, by then I've been on my path. I've been opening up my psychic skills. I've been listening to my intuition. I've been getting training and connecting with Mother Earth and listening for guidance and following it through these deep indigenous traditions that are unbroken despite the colonialization. I've been deepening into this wisdom. And I went to my dad's um, bedside as he was getting ready to pass. And we had this beautiful several hour journey together, just me sitting by his bed and him unconscious. But in that space between us, he was having a psychic conversation with me, showing me like a life review. Like, do you remember this when you were this age? Do you remember that? And I would, things I'd forgotten about. So it wasn't me like doing it, you know, he was like showing me, this is what I remember of us. And he was going through this whole life thing with me. And I was like, wow, thank you, dad. Thank you for doing that with me. And in the morning he was ready to go and he just lifted off from his body and this big bubble of sparkling light just filled the whole space and then just dissipated. And it was so easy and graceful and beautiful. And I thought to myself, that was him. And now his body is here, but it's not him. Yeah. You know, and so that's when we tune into that energy that we are, that sparkle dust, that, that lightness of being, that beauty, that grace, the thing that makes us breathe, that thing that opens us up, that is our true self. And when we follow that one, we make really good choices. We experience right side up world and our life just gets better and better and better, you know, and it does go through rocky times. Sure. Because we got to let go of the, you know, the old stuff, but, but the less attached we are to that old stuff, the more easy it is. And it's, it's really a beautiful, graceful experience to be aligned with your soul. Well, and, and death shouldn't, it shouldn't fear us. And we shouldn't be afraid of death. We're all going to die, you know, we're all born and we're all going to pass. And we, we should be looking at death as a transformation, you know, a transition. To, but like you said, we have to understand Earth first before we, you know, clean our toys up over here before we go to the next journey of our lives, you know, because uh, if we're leaving a bunch of dirty toys over here and a mess over here, wh what are we bringing over over there? We're bringing a mess over there, too. You know, it just continues to the pattern just continues to make a mess and where nobody's healing, nobody's growing and that. Uh, because I feel that for myself, I feel that death is just another transformation of another life, right? Uh, you leave this body, but you move on to a different um, identity and that. So, And there's no escaping the lessons that you signed up to learn. So that's why do your work while you're here. Otherwise, you'll just have another lifetime and you'll go through the whole experience again. And if you didn't really appreciate it and you don't want to be here, then just stick it out and learn your lessons and then you can go and you can be wherever you want to be. But when you make the commitment to be with Mother Earth, you really are making the commitment to refine yourself into love. That's yeah. your, you're making that commitment and refining your soul into love is like quite a process. And there's a lot of depth to it and there's a lot of grittiness to it. And it's a challenging curriculum on this school, on this planet. Um, but it's, um, but it brings us closer to what love really means, a depth of love that is far greater than any surface level understanding of it. It's an experience of it as we move through the layers back into ourselves, our true nature. It's powerful. And anybody who's on the planet at this time, you actually did sign up for it. So I always remind myself, stop complaining. You wanted to be here. There was a long line of people, like souls, wanting to be here at this time, right? And we're the lucky ones that got in. So like, but we're, we're down here going, Whoa, I can't believe this is so awful. You know, and it's yeah. like, really? We knew it was going to be stenchy. I mean, come on. Of course it is. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> so Carrie, I want to get into your book, Inner Medicine. Uh, we're almost at the end here. Uh, time is just flying by, right? Mm -hmm. And time is precious. So I want to talk about the Inner Medicine book. And uh, the other book that I'm really interested in is From We to Me. Uh, so let's talk about those two books. Uh, and then we're going to talk about your retreat that's coming up in 2025, because I'd really like to get that out there for you. Yeah. So, well, Inner Medicine is my latest book and it's Inner Medicine Becoming One with Mother Earth for the Survival of Humanity because humanity is a species and species don't have to continue as we've seen on this planet. There's many extinct species and humanity can be another one of those. But we, if we learn how to work with the planet, we learn how to listen and we become the stewards of this planet as we were designed to be, then we'll stick around in, in a, maybe a new configuration. But we will be um, divinely inspired in the ways to best serve this planet and to make our presence important enough to keep us, right? So there's that. And that book is, it leads you through the medicine wheel. We talked about it, you know, it leads through the south, the west, the north, and the east. Uh, and that's what my training program does. So it, the the book is a good introduction to some of the medicine that happens in the inner medicine training. Uh, in terms of the other book, From We to Me, that was a book I wrote um, decoupling from my former 20-year 20, 20 relationship. And um, I wrote that, you know, just like a year or so after the divorce, a couple years after. And I was charting the course of some very challenging dynamics between um, the unhealed relationship with my former partner and, you know, the sort of war of the roses that can happen between men and women and kind of the worst aspects of, you know, the reason why they have child codes and things like that is to avoid some of the things that were happening in the dissolution of my marriage. And so, yeah, like really navigating that, like how do you come to grace when people just want to be at war and how do you, how do you move yourself through it to liberate yourself from those dynamics of being microaggressed and, you know, and maybe having the other spouse say some stuff about you to your kids and kind of create a false image, those kind of things. And, you know, so how do you deal with your feelings about the other person? And, and are you doing that to them, but you just don't see it because you're mad, yeah. you know? So those like all those things are in there as well as dating after a long-term relationship and the awkwardness of dating. And when you've been with one partner for that long, and then you're going to go open yourself up to new people, it's very awkward. And so a lot of that, um, how do you handle that too? So that's all in that book. <clears throat> what yeah, I really like, what I really liked about that book, Carrie, was the we to me. It's the switching, right? And you talked about that right at the beginning of the show is, you know, that switch. You had to make that switch after 20 years. So when I seen the title of that book, I was like, oh, I get it. It's the switch. She did the switch. Mm -hmm. Like anybody who has gone through it, who had to make that transformation and that switch understands the me to me, to we, the we to me, right? Yeah. And there is that part and becoming sovereign is a really important thing, especially for I mean, for everyone be, to step out of these conditioned, programmed ways of being that create entanglements and enmeshments and codependency and eventually just cause a lot of suffering instead of just vulnerability, transparency, clarity, and truth, which are really awesome. You know, maybe painful at yeah. times, but more solid ground to stand on. Um, so like being in that spot of finding yourself in the me conversation and finding out what's true for yourself. Maybe if you've been immersed in a relationship that was so immersive that you can't, you lost yourself, you forgot who you were, or you just surrendered. Well, you know, what do you want for dinner? Whatever you want. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> if you're in that space, like it's like you've got to find yourself again. It's like, what do I want? What does make me happy? What does bring me joy? What brings me pleasure? I don't know. I have to find out. And sometimes the only way you can find out is by leaving that person and going off on your own journey, especially if you've been at it for a while and really trying to heal and fix that relationship. Maybe it's just not going to be fixed, <laughs> you know, and so you just move on and find a space where you can be happy. This is your life. It's short, you know, so make the most of it. And, you know, on the other side of that conversation, my, my 
partner, my divine partner, Akeem, and I have been talking about writing the next book, which is From Me to We, which is a different conversation because once you've gone to me and you know yourself and you're sovereign, then you can move into what's called interdependency not dependency, not codependency, but interdependency. And the truth is we'll get so much more accomplished when we work together. You know, there's no I in team, you know, for a reason. Right. <laughs> so, you know, so becoming interdependent, but as a sovereign being choosing to be interdependent is a very different conversation. And so that's something that is in the works for us. Um, you know, it's it's been in the works for about eight years now. We just haven't put pen to paper, but it's coming. But yeah, like, how do you do that? How do you maintain your sovereignty, but then also contribute your energy towards collaborative projects that are yeah. interdependent, that are serving everyone? That's the new conversation on the planet. You know, that's what we're stepping into. So, Carrie, I want to get it out before we wrap up. You have this incredible retreat coming up in Peru in 2025. Mm -hmm. So do you want to share a little bit about that? So any of the listeners out there, uh, how, how they can reach you for that? How does that work? Is, is it full? Like, tell me some juicy details about this retreat. Yes. Yeah, so it is not full yet. We haven't done any marketing on it. So thank you for helping me do some marketing on it. <laughs> <We laughs> I just, just hear the push. <laughs> yeah. We just set the date and we're like, we're going to do this. And uh, so, yeah, it's going to be in June. It's going to be the last couple of weeks in June into July the last 10 days really um so like june whatever it is through july 4th so i don't know something like that but we're going to visit the um we're going to visit with our medicine people our caro medicine people up in the andes mountains um tomas and lucia they're a beautiful couple of medicine people and they produce our cloths our woven cloths that we create our our mesas with a mesa is a bundle of medicine um, that's filled with stones and that you select to create your inner medicine. Anyway, they create the cloths for that, which are beautiful and they're so colorful and like rainbow colored and gorgeous and hand woven with natural fibers and dyes. And it's just, it's, it's a beautiful indigenous tradition. And so they, they come with us and um, Tomas comes with us and we do um, ceremony in person at these ancient spaces that are like really potent and powerful to be at. People have been praying there and going there for thousands of years. I mean, it's like amazing to be in these temples. And so we'll be going to um, a handful of those. We'll be going to the Holy Mountain of uh, Alcingate and doing prayers with the Holy Mountain, which is a very powerful, formidable force of love and definitely no BS. Like that mountain will kick your butt if you lie to it. <laughs> so don't come if you plan to lie. Yeah. You know, like, but if you want to be liberated, please come. So, because it will liberate you. It's a very honest, very truthful stand of truth and love on this planet. It's amazing. And um, and then we're going to go to Lake Titicaca, which I have not been to yet. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, it's the highest lake in the world and it's the birthplace of the Inca. So, um, yeah, I'm excited to go. It's divine feminine, powerful divine feminine. And I want to experience that. So we'll be doing that as well on this trip. So super excited to go. And there's a web page that describes it. You can get to it from my homepage, the carriehummingbird.com. You can just look up retreats. There's a little link for it. And it gives you all the pricing and everything like that. There's a discount. There's a major discount, like a thousand dollar discount to be to go there as a student. So if you're thinking about going, you might also think about doing the inner medicine training program, get your Mesa started, get your inner medicine bundle started, and then, you know, take that to Peru and activate it in all these power spots with the shaman. Like, yeah, like you want to have a Mesa when you're there. So you don't just want to be a tourist, you know, you want to like participate. So. Well, when I when when I did my homework on you, Carrie, I was like, oh my God, she has a retreat to Peru. I gotta find out more about this, right? Because it's traveling into a different country and understanding all of the cultures as well, mm -hmm. along with the medicines and the healings and that as well. It's it's a transformation. It, it's a real journey to be a part of. Uh, and during this whole bro broadcast, I've been looking at those butterflies, and you kept talking about the inner shell and the wrapping and everything, and I'm thinking and she has these four butterflies and you were talking about the four court and courts right so like i was just like everything is just aligning right like the four butterflies the four 
east, west, north, and south, you know, uh, a lot of it just all came together. So Carrie, if anybody would like to reach out to you to have you as a guest on their podcast or to just have you as a, a speaker for any of your their events as, a, as well, how can they reach you? Um, so CarrieHummingbird.com has a link for booking appointments with me. So you can book healing sessions, you can book a conversation, um, got a discovery call if you're thinking about that. And there's, um, you know, so reach out that way and then we can connect and, and see if you want to have me on a show, if that's what you're looking for. But yeah, it's just, there's, there's all up on our website. It's all dialed in and all the social media is linked from there too. Awesome. Well, it was a real pleasure having you on as a guest and being on the other side of the table. Like I said, I was on Carrie's show on her podcast. Check out her podcast, uh, The Soul Nectar. Uh, she has some amazing people on there as well. Uh, you know, I, I love the platform. I love the way that you do your podcast as well, Carrie. So thank you again for that opportunity. And thank you for joining me on my side. You know, it's nice to switch the tables once in a while. Uh, so if anybody would like to know more about all of these guests, check out Miss Liz's website at www.misslizesteatime.com or check out the YouTube channel or Miss Liz's podcast apps all, all over. Um, wherever you're listening in, let Miss Liz know where you're tuning in because I always like to know where you're tuning in from and i'll be back at 7 p.m tonight with returning guest allison hammond and we'll be talking about maps uh making your life plans that's right we're going to do some education on this tea time uh and that's what tea time is all about it's teaching educational awareness that you just never know what's in your community or in your country or even right next door right you, you, there's incredible people like carrie out there so i got to meet carrie and carrie got to meet me and we're going to continue this conversation uh, at 7 p.m. with the second guest, and we're going to bring you another TEA, and we're going to do this all over again. Until then, stay tuned, and I'll see you guys later tonight for the second tea time of this week. <laughs>